So, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt showed the Tory budget plan to the Office of Budget Responsibility, and they said, taking that into account, the people of the UK are facing a 7% fall in household income over the next two years, and we're going into a recession. So here's how he presented it to Parliament. We are honest about the challenges. That's good, because if we're not honest about the problems we're facing, how can we face them? The Office for Budget Responsibility confirms global factors are the primary cause of current inflation. That might be true for right this second, but it's not exactly the whole story, because here's what the chair of the OBR had to say about the UK's future in general. In the, in the long term, it is the case that Brexit has a bigger impact than the pandemic. Anyone who says there are easy answers is not being straight with the British people. Really? Because you said your entire budget plan is about making up for the £55 billion black hole in our budget. And yet the Office of Budget Responsibility that you seem to be basing all of your analysis on says that leaving the single market has cost 4% of our GDP, which means that rejoining the single market, which the EU has offered many, many times, would save a hell of a lot more money than your entire budget plan. As Conservatives, we do not leave our debts to the next generation. Your generation of Conservatives pushed through a Brexit that my generation did not want, leaving us £100 billion poorer, which means that yes, you bloody well do. British families make sacrifices every day to live within their means, and so too must their government. What? What sacrifices are you making? You guys took a £2,200 pay rise earlier this year. And to show that he's finally warming up to the idea of a windfall tax on energy companies... I have no objection to windfall taxes if they are genuinely about windfall profits caused by unexpected increases in energy prices. I mean, that's exactly what Labour has been saying for the last 11 months. And while making excuses for cutting foreign aid... The United Kingdom is and has always been a force for good in the world. Yeah, I know, I know, but we can't take the bait. Providing our children with a good education is not just an economic mission, it's a moral mission. So you'll teach them, you just won't feed them, right? But as Chancellor, I want to know the answer to one simple question. Will every young person leave the education system with the skills they would get in Japan, Germany, or Switzerland? No, because your Brexit took us out of the Erasmus program, which means that when we're competing in the global labor market, graduates from Switzerland and Germany will have a hell of a lot more experience working in international environments on their CVs than Brits do. Now here's his argument against trying to get money from the private school system. Some have suggested putting VAT on independent school fees, which would raise about 1.7 billion pounds. That would result in up to 90,000 children from the independent sector switching to state schools. Now for starters, the main thing people are actually asking for is for private schools to no longer be treated as charities and stop getting three billion pounds in tax breaks. Second of all, private schools only teach 5.8% of UK kids. So are we saying that we have enough money to teach 94% of our kids, but not the rest? And do you think the millions of state school kids who work just as hard as private school kids and yet are far less likely to be accepted to top universities would look at a private school and think, yeah, that's a charity I support. What Jeremy Hunt just did there was defend privilege. And who is he bringing in to help run the NHS now? I've asked former health secretary and chair of the Norfolk and Waveney integrated care system, Patricia Hewitt, yeah. to help me. Yeah, because when the country's really worried about your party selling off the NHS to private corporations, it's a great idea to hire somebody who was involved in a corporate lobbying scandal while in government, because it will really re-establish trust. And on economic growth. Well, they've never been interested in growth, but we on this side of the house are. You cut a hundred billion pounds of our economy. Using our Brexit freedoms, by the end of next year, we will decide and announce changes to EU regulations in our five growth industries. So you say you're doing this to help with growth, and you say you're basing all of your analysis on the Office of Budget Responsibility. Well, the Office of Budget Responsibility says that it's precisely the non-tariff barriers between the UK and the EU, i.e., the differences in regulations that is taking 4% of our economic productivity, i.e. a reduction in growth by a hundred billion pounds. I mean, the Bank of England even said this yesterday. Because I look at a lot of firm level data and um, the small firms are the ones that are most damaged yep. because the cost of the paperwork and so forth uh, is a barrier. And your answer to this is to create more differences in regulation between the UK and the EU. Are you okay, Jess? You see, you began this by saying... We are honest about the challenges. And yet you didn't mention the fact that the governmental body that you're basing all of your plans on says that your Brexit, the title of your manifesto, is causing utter devastation to our economy. We're now going into a recession and a very difficult time for the people of the UK. And everybody knows that there are global challenges. And as the captains of our ship, we know that you can't avoid all of them. But the passengers are gradually noticing that you are the ones who've been poking holes in the bottom of our boat.